designers get together for a really great cause to make some amazing tabletops. So of course, we asked our buddy Yvette Rios if she could go on in there and set a little table herself. Watch this. I am so excited to be here at New York City's Skylight Studios for DIFA's Dining by Design event. DIFA stands for Design Industry Foundation Fighting AIDS, and this VIP charity event is not to be topped. In 24 hours, this whole room will be transformed into 50 of the coolest dining rooms you've ever seen, including one designed by me. Raising money for AIDS education, the gala showcases the work of 45 designers who create dinner settings for 50 different tables. Each designer gets one 11 by 11 foot square like this one. The only requirement is that it has to seat 10 people for dinner. Other than that, anything goes. And boy, do these designers get creative. Tell me what you've got. I love this mixture. You've got traditional, you've got modern, eclectic. We have the traditional at the end, and we have a very modern setting in the center. And this is the new young kind of formal. AIDS is a very global problem right now, and I really wanted to emphasize that. So when you come into the booth, you'll have images of people from all over the world projected on the flowers behind us, on the white surfaces of the floor, the, the tabletop, and the diners will be wearing white. So all of the images will be uh, all over them. So this is my space right here. It's designed for 8 o'clock coffee, and my idea was to have a tent in the rainforest. So we're putting up the tent right now, and we're going to rig our lighting. It's going to be very cool. We've got a lot of work to do, though. As Yvette and the other designers gave their tables a final touch, the guests arrived, and it was showtime. I've got rock candy. These are going to be stirs for after dinner. The guests can stir their coffee with it. And the entire floor is all coffee beans. And guess what? I brought my own grinder. I wanted to find a way to create essentially the feel of dining on a wonderful wool sweater. I designed this table for New York Times and Design Within Reach, and we went with a very eco-friendly green environment. I've got coffee in my toes, but you know, that's the nicest thing besides sand that I've ever had between my toes, I must say. <laughs> it's been a great dinner, but now it's time for coffee. Coffee shakes, actually. So, Yvette's here with us. Now, tell me about some of the tables that really stood out to you, because, I mean, all of them just look so oh, outrageous. But there was one in particular. It was by David Rockwell and the Rockwell Group, and it was an entirely knit table. The whole, the table top, the floors, the oh, walls, yeah. everything was knit. Fifteen people in his office have been knitting wow. for a month and a half. Look at this thing. It's amazing. It was Look amazing. at that. It was amazing. Talk about a cozy dinner party. Yeah, it was very cozy. You curl up in your tablecloth. Yeah, it was like being in a big sweater. It was great. I, I love, love the coffee between your toes. Though, yeah, that coffee, was Because a... you know, coffee has oils on the outside, so that's actually, you know, doing Yeah, purpose. my feet were actually tingling for a while after, because the caffeine, I think it just... Absorbs like, into yeah, your feet. Yeah, it makes your feet tingle, believe it or not. Yet another use for the bean. Who knew? Yet another Who use. Knew? <laughs> kind of like olive oil in my family, we put the EBO on everything. Like my mom, like gives herself a pedicure and rubs herself down. <laughs> Well, so and your hair, too. I've heard of and that. And olive oil yes. in the hair, hot oil treatment. Yes, fabulous. of course. And now we can have some hot bean hot beans. pedicures. Hot Yes. <laughs> So That's awesome. this, this event just doesn't happen in, in Manhattan, No, right? it's a traveling show. It goes, like, it starts in New York, and then it's going to go to Kansas City and Dallas and Chicago and Boston. It goes all over the place. And we'll put a, uh, the info up for it on, on our website. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can check out. So yes. everybody can check it out. Absolutely. Um, what was the most unusual table you oh saw? Was it, was it the, the, the sweater the, table? That one was pretty unusual, but there was one that kind of took the cake. And it was, it was a very political one. It was very controversial. But basically, there was a guy, a, a man was hanging by his legs above a table. And the idea was that he's suffering and we're all resisting to assist him. So it was kind of a statement about how glo you know, AIDS has become a global problem and we're not dealing with it anymore because it's kind of in another country and other places. And you know, so it was very political. It was very controversial, but it was. It was How long did the poor man have to hang? Well, them? it was surprising. They were there for like <clears throat> twenty minutes at a time, and then they'd switch off it, oh, upside down. I was gonna say yes. After a while, and they had little harnesses on, so everybody was safe, and they're acrobats. So that, yeah, it was good. 
But that's, you know, that's the point of this event. Absolutely. To get people talking it's about AIDS event. and that it's, it's, it's still such a, a prevalent problem in yes, the world. Yes, absolutely. Um, so you can go see this fantastic tour from yes. coast to coast. But even sooner, we can watch Yvette teach us how to make dirty tabletops right up to this. And it's a it's an AIDS awareness um, charity fundraiser well, design a thon. Design. Yes, dining by design. Yes. It is uh, not just in New York. It's going to be traveling around the country. Yes, it will. And now she's going to bring it on home to us. She's going to teach us that you don't have to be a fancy schmancy designer to set a really hot table. No, you sure don't. So I wanted to show you guys. So there's basically like three big trends that okay. I saw at this dining by design. The first one was you pick a theme and you you make that the center of your table. So for instance, there was one table that had like a picnic basket theme and each little person had their you own picnic from basket. Yeah, right? Yeah, look how cute was that? Oh, yeah, that, that is so adorable. Cute. And then there was another. Oh, I'm feeling that one. That is straight up cute. So cute. And so then there was another one that had this 1940s theme, black white, very glamorous, very retro. Gorgeous. So for you know, I wanted to show you guys how you could create a coffee table theme since I did a coffee. A theme. coffee table. Yeah, super easy. One way that you can kind of incorporate a theme into your centerpiece is if you get two vases and you get one smaller, one bigger, and then you put stuff in between the two. Like I put coffee beans here. You could do you candy. You clever you could cookie. Do <laughs> I love that. So, see, there's there's a second vase down yeah, in here. Yeah, absolutely. And you, then you fill that one stuff. with water, and then you put your filler. Yeah, oh, it's very easy. And then so I've got... So my centerpiece is actually also a tasting, you know, tasting party. So you've got your cocoa, you've got cinnamon, you've got nutmeg, and you've got some sugar candy stirs. So Adorable. Isn't so it's it practical? It's practical, but it's a centerpiece, and it relates Fabulous. to the theme. So how do you decide on a theme? Well, it's super easy. You really want to pick things that you love. Even if it's a little wacky, if you like candy, make that the theme. If you like games, why not put like a Scrabble board in the center of your table? Oh, super cute. Cute, right? Or this would be perfect for me. <laughs> Gallons of coffee a day. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Or, you know, the other thing you want to think about is, you know, you don't want to go crazy if you're having a dinner party, like, pulling things together for your table. So use what you've got. If you've got a lot of blue vases, go with blue and white, you know? Make so it look around your house and pick what you love. Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay good. Two good lessons. Yes. You know what? Before we move on, I also wanted to say I thought this was very clever, too. If you do one of these coffee themes, inexpensive, you just cover your table with burlap yes. and it looks like a coffee set. It does. Adorable. And what I love about this, too, is you can just cut it with scissors and then you leave the frayed edge and it's totally fine. You it's don't need cheap, to it. it's cheerful, it's practical, fabulous. We like that. Let's move over to this table. This table is beautiful. Thank you. So another big trend was that designers were mixing and matching. They had super colorful tables, and you know, you can do this at home too. It's super I, easy. I definitely do this. I have mix and match pots and pans. I have mix I, and match plates and, and every color in the rainbow, and uh, I think it's groovy. Yeah, it's totally groovy. And you know what else is great about it? You can go to all of the discount stores, the dollar stores. And pick whatever you like. Your, your TJ Maxx, your Marshalls. And you know, if they only have one of something, but you love it, Everything's super affordable and you can mix and match. Absolutely. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, I think so too. Well, let me show you these two designer tables that were okay. super mixed and matched. The first one is from Benjamin Moore. I thought the colors were oh, outrageous. Oh, how much fun. Isn't that fun? And then the walls were all actual paint chips that were glued onto the wall. Love that. I know. Very cool. Adorable. Very cool. Okay, so then this one was um, a mixed and matched chairs. You see how they're all different? I thought that was super very cool, cool too. Very cool. Very collective. So, so here, here's some really cool ways and simple ways that you can make a mixed match table come together. So I've got four different plates, four different glasses, four different wine glasses, and what you want to do is just get inexpensive placemats that all match. So it pulls it together it with the placemat. It pulls it all mat. together. I love that. That's very clever. And then the napkin also getting matching ones also helps pull it together. Then you can also do little arrangements of one type of flower so that everybody has kind of the same little arrangement on their plate, and that also helps bring all the colors together. And that's also a terrific little, you know, take it home with you, party yeah, favor kind of thing. why not? Absolutely. And I give bud vases all the time as thank yous, and I put the same note in over and over again. Thanks for being a bud. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so let me show you this one. I killed me. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. I love it. Okay, what's going on? Okay, I cool. love this team. So next big trend, use nature. You know, mm. when in doubt, go outside, clip some branches, pull in some leaves, My mom always got. did this whenever, uh, when, when we were kids, the kids would go outside and basically make the centerpiece. They go outside and collect the forest 
you know, my mom would like debug it and then put it in a bowl or, or, or whatever, a vase. Yeah. And the kids could contribute to the table. That I way. love that idea. Well, so that was a couple huge trend. Yeah, here you go. Too? So this designer used oh. a whole tree and then like spray painted it. I thought that was really cool. Gorgeous. And then this designer did like a very, very cool set in English garden all with little clippings. Wow, it's a mini intense. garden. It's and like it had, side table. This was outrageous. It had tiny little goldfish that looked like oh. full-size koi when you, you know what I mean, to scale. Wow. It was adorable, super Amazing. cute. Amazing. Okay, so here's our all natural table. Okay. A couple cool tips. You know, bring in leaves if you've got any leaves. You can get these. You can actually do cuttings from tropical plants you have at home. Put them under your placemats. Go with very. Or just pick them up at the flower store. Or pick them up at yeah. the flower store. And then use a centerpiece. Why not use a branch, some piece of driftwood? It doesn't have to be like really pale like this. You could spray paint it a poppy color if you want it that way, or just leave it natural. Pine cones too are beautiful. Pine you can cones scatter are beautiful. those on the table. And yeah. You can spray paint those easily. I love those. And I love the uh, these mats are inexpensive, you find them everywhere, and they're just so beautiful. I think so too. And you know, this is fun if you want to make, um, you know, make your own takeout food. You're making a fabulous Thai supper or something. Yeah. You know, this you could go really exotic here Absolutely. and have a lot of fun. Absolutely. I love you, Beck. This <laughs> is as easy and affordable. It's snack of the daytime, you guys. Come on in here, chef. Oh, this sounds delicious. First of all, listen to the name of the company. Thou shall snack. <laughs> That's brilliant because it sounds like you know it sounds like a, a, an eleventh commandment, 11th commandment yeah. or something. You you'll eat this <laughs> snack and you'll like it. Um, these are oh my gravy! I am gonna like these cinnamon vodka bites. That sounds delicious. From Seattle, Washington. Thank you.